it's really, really nice to see so many people here today. Thank you very much indeed for coming. It's a lovely day out there, so there are other things I know that you uh, you could be doing. In fact, I found quite a few of you sitting outside in the sun when, when I arrived. But thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm Angela Schofield, Chairman of Pool NHS Foundation Trust, and uh, it's, it's just great to be here again. Thank you very much indeed to the Salvation Army for being so welcoming here this afternoon. It's a great venue for us. It's really good to bring the hospital into, uh, into the town. Uh, and thank you very much to all of the, uh, the colleagues here who look after us so well. Um, I think I'm right in saying, Ken, that there's no fire alarm uh, practice today. So uh, if the fire alarm goes off, uh, run like that uh, through the fire exits um, to the public car park. Let's keep our fingers crossed that there, there isn't one. So it goes without saying, no smoking. Uh, Thank you very much to the organisers of today, um, Anita Bonham at the back there and Ray Chalmers, who unfortunately has now left us. And also many thanks to all the other staff who contributed today and, and provided the stands. Now before we get cracking, uh, could we do what we always do and board members and governors either stand up or wave so that uh, our, our members can see who's, uh, who's responsible and accountable. So there's quite a few of them uh, about. Thank you very much. Um, the annual members meeting is a, is a really important occasion because it is when we, the hospital, account to you, our members, uh, for the performance of the hospital for the year that actually ended on the 31st of March uh, 2015. So it's a little while ago, but we, we tell you about what happened in that year. We've, we've provided a summary of our uh, annual report on your chairs. Uh, and we've got full copies if you want to see the whole annual report. Um, but that, that is what we're technically here to do, is to, count, to account to you for what happened in 2014-15. However, 31st of March 2015 is a little while ago, so we take it as an opportunity as well to tell you what's going on at the moment and what we're, uh, what we're planning to do. Um, we'll also have some clinical presentations. It's always a very good opportunity for us to uh, uh, showcase uh, a, a, a clinical service to you, um, which I think you probably find that the most interesting bit of the afternoon. And this afternoon we've got two clinical presentations. One is about the research that we do in the Trust, and the other one is about our wonderful accident and emergency services. So I'm sure, I hope you will find those interesting. It's really important that we have a strong number of members uh, because it is to you that we account uh, for what we do on behalf of the public. You're here representing the public. And it's really important for us to be connected to local people and local communities. We feel it's very, very important that you have confidence in your local hospital, that if you do need the local, local hospital, you know it's going to care for you well, and you know that you're going to be treated appropriately with dignity, that you're going to be respected, and that you're going to be involved in your care. As well as members, we have governors, and I really would like to thank our governors and pay tribute to them for their oversight of the board, they hold the board to account, uh, and for also being the main link with you, our members. Uh, they are very, very important. They do a fantastic job. They do it completely unremunerated. And they're also tremendous ambassadors to, for the hospital. So thank you very much indeed for them. You may remember, a number of you were here last year, I know, that when we met last year, we had appointed in April 2014 new executive directors. There'd been quite a change around. And so we've had our new team in place generally from the 1st of April 2014. And certainly they've led to the performance in the year that we're talking about. And as you will see from when Debbie Fleming talks about the performance of the Trust, they've done an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, and they've really shown how effective their leadership is at what has been uh, quite a, a, a challenging uh, time, both for the NHS and for Poole Hospital. I'd just like to mention how we're trying to uh, work with members a little bit more, dif a little bit di differently. 
Um, and that is by inviting you to come to more clinical presentations. And I know a number of you come to those and I hope you find them useful. If there's any clinical service that you would particularly like to hear about, please let us know and we will uh, arrange that. Uh, the next clinical presentation is on the 15th of October and it will be about respiratory services and uh, please book in the usual way through Anita. We will continue to have these uh, clinical presentations uh, and we'll, we'll go through a number of, of services that the hospital provides. Um, we also had uh, an event in May um, where we invited members to come and help us to work through some questions about our values and how we think hospitals should be and should develop in the future. That was really, really useful and we'll be doing the same again probably in May next year when uh, the weather's hopefully got a bit better. Uh, and what you tell us is really, really helpful and important. You've stressed to us how important having services available seven days a week is. You've told us how we must join things up with other services. You've told us that it's important to have more local services. So I think there'll be a few more questions today, uh, uh, but please uh, be assured that we do listen to you and we do build what you say into our plans. I'm going to, um, oh, I just wanted to mention as well the open day. Uh, we, we had an open day in July, uh, NHS day, and um, it was tremendous. And thank you very much to everybody who came and to all the people who organised it. A number of you have said this afternoon how great it was, but uh, maybe we could have done better in publicising it, so we, we will try and work out how we can get to more people next time. Um, we don't know when next time will be. This is an incredible thing to organise. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, you know, all credit to those who put in so much effort. So we might not be doing it every year, but uh, we will be organising open days again because it was so successful and so very well received. So I'm going to finish off now just with a, with a few thanks. Um, in the next couple of months, we'll be saying goodbye to two of our non-executive directors who have been on the board since uh, 2007, uh, Jean Lang and Guy Spencer. They joined the board when Pool uh, Hospital first became uh, an NHS Foundation Trust. They have been absolutely fantastic, great non-executive directors, um, and we'll be very, very sorry to, to lose them. But they're co coming to the end of their term of office. We've got amazing volunteers, uh, several hundred volunteers who do a wide range of things. A big thank you to them. We've got wonderful fundraisers who raise money from rattling a tin to giving large donations to being members of organisations who specifically work with the hospital. So a very, very big thank you to all of them. Big thank you to our patients. Um, we rely on you to tell us how we're doing and we greatly appreciate all your compliments. Uh, I'm sure there's quite a lot of staff who greatly appreciate the boxes of chocolates and other nice things. Uh, we also appreciate when you have, when you tell us when things haven't gone well for you, because that gives us the opportunity to learn from your experience and to improve. And um, my final thanks go to our staff. Uh, Pool Hospital is nothing without its staff. The staff are our Pool Hospital, and if Pool Hospital is well regarded, provides an excellent service is because we have got the most wonderful staff you could wish to have. So thank you very much indeed to them. Well, hopefully most of you agree, so uh, thank you very much for that. Right, we're now going to get on with the more formal business, um, and there will be, uh, so we're going to have the, uh, Debbie Fleming, Chief Executive, is going to present her report on the annual report for 2014-15. Uh, then Mark Orchard is going to present the accounts, uh, Director of Finance, and uh, Jeffrey Carlton, who is the uh, Deputy Chairman of Governors, is going to present the membership report. We'll then have a 10 minute break for questions and discussion about uh, the annual report, um, and then we'll move on to our uh, presentations. Uh, oh no, then we're going to give you your job to do. Um, and then we'll uh, move on to our presentations. So, thank you very much indeed, Debbie. Hi, this is the SS Consultant Company. 
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Debbie Fleming. Uh, this is my second year here at the annual members' meeting, and it's really fantastic to be with you this afternoon. Uh, can I just add my thanks to Angela's for those of you who've taken time out to join us. It's really good to see you, and, and nice to meet a number of people who I met last year to see you again. Um, so I get the opportunity to talk about my very favourite subject at the moment, which is Pool Hospital, um, and to just uh, go back over a few of the highlights of, of the past year. I want to just start by reminding everybody what we actually do. So although we are uh, called Pool Hospital, we actually provide care across uh, the whole of Dorset for people, uh, depending on what the service is. So as everybody knows, we're the designated cancer centre for Dorset. So we routinely have people coming into our hospital from across the whole of Dorset County. Uh, we're the lead in East Dorset for maternity services, paediatrics, and we are the, the, the major trauma unit for East Dorset as well. So uh, although uh, our name is Pool Hospital, and we're very proud to have that name, we actually serve a much larger population than, than, than just the people of Pool. Uh, I think there's many across the county that have, have cause to be, be grateful for services, which is, I think, uh, all of us feel very grateful for the care we get whenever we encounter services from Paul. I think uh, highlights as usual for last year is we are a very busy hospital and it continued to be busy last year. So there's lots of figures on this slide. I think that the main thing I would say is that we've got around £215 million a year to spend. Uh, we employ around 3,700 fantastic staff and uh, we are extremely busy, particularly with our emergency work. So one of the unusual features of Pool is that uh, we have a higher proportion of emergency work than nearly every other hospital in the country. There's only five that do a greater proportion of emergency work because of the lead arrangements in the patch. A uh, very busy radiotherapy unit, as many of you will know, and also probably important to note, we're the third largest paediatric unit in the south of the country. So uh, there's only, in our, in our area, there's only Southampton and Portsmouth that are busier than our own um, paediatric unit here at all. So what are we all about? I mean, I love this picture because it's such a super picture. Uh, it's such a lovely smiling face. And that's really the cool approach in action. Uh, and that, that lovely strap line that we all know, friendly, professional, patient-centered care with dignity and respect for all. And I think some of the features of that are that we have very innovative services, we're very committed to research, as you'll have seen from our stand, and you'll hear a bit later. Um, we've got people within the trust, we, we attract, recruit and retain very high calibre people. And that means that they all want to give them their best and they're constantly committed to doing even better for patients. On your tables today, I know a number of you were looking at the, the uh, pool approach and the values that we hold so dear in the hospital. And uh, just worth reminding ourselves that these values were first discussed and debated back in the 90s. And we all talked about whether these were the values that we held dear then. And staff agreed that they were. And we then thought, well, if these are our values, what is it that we want to do? What do we need to do differently so that we really are a patient-centered organization with patients at the heart of all that we do? And these values, when I come back to the, the trust, I, I worked here back in the 90s. I came back again last year. Um, and for me, it's fantastic to see these values uh, absolutely embedded in the organization so that we welcome families and carers into the organisation. We don't shut people out. We have a very open culture. If things are not going right, we want to be honest and open about that. And we do believe in sharing information so that people can make really informed decisions about their treatment and care. So these values, the pool approach, we think is at the heart of what makes pool very, very special. Just reiterate a few of our successes, and many of you will know these already. Uh, the fact that uh, we get such great feedback from our junior doctors whenever they come to work in the hospital. Uh, that we get really good results from the surveys around the standard of, of cancer treatment that's given. Uh, also, at the moment, we're rated band six by the CQC, the Care Quality Commission. They uh, come in, they are regulated for quality. They're due to do a big visit in January, and although that makes everybody sort of think quite hard about that visit, you can't ignore a CQ visit, CQC visit, it's very important. But actually, we've got a great story to tell in Paul, and we're looking forward to them coming and hearing about a lot of the fantastic work that goes on every day. So I just want to pick up a few of the highlights of the year. 
Uh, so, uh, first of all, just to, to say, and you'll see this in the report, wonderful to see our endoscopy unit refurbished. That was one of my early first duties, was to, uh, to be part of that celebration. So a really great environment now for patients coming in for endoscopies. Uh, a very busy unit doing a great job. Then we had in July, we had the, uh, the fact that we recognised that a number of trials that Paul is involved in, research trials, increased significantly. That was something else to celebrate, and again, we'll hear a bit more about that later on. Other highlights, so in August, we opened our new aseptic uh, pharmacy suite, which is fantastic, where we actually uh, get involved in, in creating the cytotoxic drugs hard to say, cytotoxic drugs that are used in chemotherapy. So having a septic pharmacy, uh, being able to do that in a safe, clean, aseptic environment, very important. And that's done wonders for refurbishing that very bottom corridor of the hospital. And many of you have walked down there. Some very striking colours uh, and a very important part of supporting all our cancer services. We then celebrated in October the refurbishment of the maternity unit. That we, at that point, we were looking at the neonatal unit, that facility. How many of you have been inside there? Who's been into the Haven birthing suite? Yes, a number of us have. The, the birthing suite now, fantastic facilities, and uh, the, the neonatal unit, absolutely wonderful to see what can be done in refurbishing an older building. Uh, and now we're working on the rest of it. We've got to think about how we get better facilities for, for the, the uh, higher risk births as well. But that was a great celebration. We have the Diabetes Centre celebrated 20 years of opening in October. Now, for me, this was wonderful because I actually was part of opening it. So it was, it was great to go along and see the pictures of when we all looked a bit younger uh, and a little bit fresher, but you know, 20 years of fantastic services being provided by that diabetes team in the diabetes unit. A few more things to celebrate. Again, October was a busy old month actually looking at this. So we had um, the, the state-of-the-art digital mammography unit opened in the breast screening unit, and again, better quality images which help improve accuracy in the diagnosis of breast cancer. October was also important in signing up to the uh, Sign Up for Safety campaign. So that was, that's something that's really been embraced by staff in the Trust. How do we really uh, look at further reducing avoidable harm by 50% over the next few years? In February, we uh, started up our new community service um, managed by the hospital, cutting the number of visits. This was our alcohol uh, outreach team. Now this service has just been nominated for a national award. We're really proud. So they've been invited to a big event up in London. This is a team of people supporting, uh, the, as we identify patients with alcohol problems, that's a whole range of ages from a whole range of backgrounds. When it comes to our attention in hospital, we're now better able to provide support for those people so that they don't have to keep coming back and being admitted, but there's targeted support working with their GPs and the community. So we're really very proud of that one. So here we've got some lovely pictures, what a very attractive gang. Uh, this is our trust board, you may not be able to see all the names exactly, uh, but the ones that we've highlighted in red are some of the new members, and you'll see that the board has gone through a lot of change over the past year, uh, with a number of new executives, as Angela said, and also uh, we have had some changes with our uh, non-executive colleagues as well. One of the fantastic events during the course of the year was the Staff Awards Ceremony, and this was my first one as Chief Executive, and I was really proud to be there. There were so many examples of great service, great people doing great things, and we were very pleased to have the Mayor and Mayoress join us on this occasion, and to listen to lots of really very moving tributes from patients and families as the, the awards that, that were put forward as to why people were being nominated for different things. The Long Service Awards were also uh, excellent. We had 40 staff, who were given long service awards this year, representing 1,200 years of NHS service. And I think our longest service, uh, uh, there was some at 40 years as well, which is pretty amazing. Uh, people really committed to giving outstanding patient care, and that's what Paul Hospital is full of. In terms of performance, the hospital performed extremely well. We had a very, very good year in 2014-15. We delivered all the targets that were expected of us, apart from one, and that was the accident emergency waiting time target of four hours. This was something you'll recall from all the things in the newspaper and the press, where hospitals were busier than ever last year. Um, and we were, like many people, under a great deal of pressure. So that, that was the one target we, we didn't achieve, but we feel that that was a big national issue. Um, and, and we're still very, very proud of the fact that all our cancer waiting times, uh, general waiting times for surgery and treatment, they, they all, uh, we were ranked amongst the best in the country for that. 
Very importantly to us, 95% uh, of our patients in the friends and family test said they would recommend our hospital uh, to other people. Now that, that is what matters such a lot. People that come into contact with the hospital, would they recommend it to others? So far this year, uh, things are still looking good. So we had a really good quarter one. We're coming up to the end of quarter two. I think it's fair to say the hospital is still under a great deal of pressure. We're noticing it now, even though with the Aston Emergency Service uh, and, and throughput through the hospital, we're feeling much more confident that that target is, is still a challenge, but we've done such a lot of work, we're feeling much happier about that. And we look on course to achieve that, we hope, at the end of this quarter, which finishes, I think, in just a few days' time. Interestingly, we've had a large number of referrals coming into the Trust Fund, particularly cancer referrals, and it's that area that we're noticing even more pressure. Uh, so I'm just sort of flagging, we know that, that we're still doing very, very well, but as we go through the year, we do know there's a lot of demand out there, and the Trust is, is under pressure to meet that. But we've had some fantastic highlights as well. Um, we've announced our new satellite radiotherapy treatment centre that we're going to be establishing in Dorchester. <coughs> and I said at the beginning of, of my talk that we provide services to people across the whole of Dorset. And we've now got the technology to be able to develop a satellite radiotherapy centre out in the Western County, managed and supported by our staff from Pools, so it'll be a pool facility. But how fantastic that will be, that people living on the western side of the county don't have to travel so far to get the treatment that they urgently need. Um, and many of them are coming in for several weeks, several days a week, for very short periods of time. So we know that that will be a great facility. It won't open for a little while. It'll take a while to get that established, but we're really proud of that. We're very pleased at how recruitment's going. So you may have heard a lot about the NHS using agency staff, and we've had to use a lot of staff, agency staff in the earlier months of this year, but we've been able to recruit far more nurses in, and we've been very encouraged about that. That's looking, looking good. Lots of good work working with the other trusts. Now, if you read the echo, and you get caught up in so many stories, it just looks as though we're always fighting each other for different things. The truth is, is actually, the organisations in Dorset work very closely together to meet the needs of patients, um, and we're doing that now very actively in looking to the longer term to get sustainable services. So I think you all know about the clinical services review that's going on in Dorset, um, and that's provoking some very interesting conversations about which trust should be doing what. Um, but just to let you know, the three acute hospitals, we have put in a bid to be uh, part of a new pilot programme uh, nationally where they're asking hospitals to see what they can achieve by working together. And we're in, we have been putting the proposal for the bank now and we're waiting to hear on that, uh, which will be very good news. And as always, we continue to invest well in patient care, safety and quality. So this is far too tiny for anybody to read, but this is sort of on one page. This is, what's our vision in pool? Well, our vision hasn't changed. It's to deliver excellent patient-centered emergency and planned care. Whatever we're doing, whatever care we're delivering, we want it to be of the highest quality and where patients feel safe in our hands. The values of pool hospital haven't changed. They're the same values around putting the patient at the heart of everything we do. And our objectives over the next few years are again the same. We want to deliver safe, responsive, compassionate patient care. We want to inspire, attract, and develop our staff. We want to make sure that we use all our resources to really good effect. We want to work with all our partners in the best interests of patients. And we want to be a well-governed and well-managed organisation that's actually doing the right thing in the healthcare system. So I'm going to pause there and hand over to Mark, who'll talk a little bit more about the money. Uh, but uh, just really pleased to get a chance to share with you some of the great things going on in Paul at the moment. Thank you.